chapter 1. Thank you. Philippians chapter 1. The straight betwixt two. What is he talking about? What is it? Well, the strong language that Paul uses here refers to a dilemma, if you will, or um, a struggle that he has with two things. First, he says, for I am in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. This expression, I am in a straight betwixt two, means that he earnestly longed to be with Christ. Now this is different than the average outlook on death. Because in most everyone, there is that natural desire to live. And we hang on and we hang on and we just don't want to let go. And it's, it's rare, if any, that actually truly don't fear death and really want to be with Christ. When I think of people in the Bible that just immediately come to mind, I think of Enoch. Enoch was all about being with Jesus. That's it. So much so that God allowed him to bypass death completely. And Paul is... His, he's winding the end of his ministry down, and, and he knows, uh, it's believed he was incarcerated here, and he doesn't know if he's going to be released, he doesn't know if he is going to be let go, or if, he's, if, if something, you know, if they, they actually are going to persecute him. And so he says, I'm in a strait betwixt two. I really want to go and be with Jesus. I really want to spend time with him. I really want to be in his presence. I am looking forward to the joy of just being there bodily with him forever. But he said, I, I'm, I'm struggling. The word rendered is, I'm in a strait. It means to be pressed or constrained as in a crowd. To feel oneself pressed or pent up as not to know what to do. So Paul is, is saying, and, and he's saying, I want to go to be with Jesus, but at the same time, I know there's still a lot that you need. And because of who Paul was, Paul's focus was not upon selfish things and upon himself, but rather upon those who he was ministering to. So he says, I'm content to go to be with Jesus, and he said, that would be far better. I mean, who would, ever, who would ever in a million years take being in heaven with Christ away from them? If you asked any Christian who has died and gone on before to come back, mm -mm. <laughs> so are you crazy? What are you talking about? No way, okay? That's a different mindset. Too many people today are way too earthly minded and very little heavenly minded. We spend our lives worrying about this life and we don't spend anywhere near enough time worrying about tomorrow, worrying about heaven, worrying about a relationship with God. So Paul's got this dilemma. And, he's, and he says, having a desire to depart. Now that desire was to die. When have you really actually talked to somebody who wanted to die for the right reason? Now follow me. As a pastor, I make a lot of hospital visits and I make a lot of home visits. And I hear this constantly. I just wish the Lord would take me. But they're not asking the Lord to take them because they just want to be with Jesus. Now listen to me carefully. Few, rare, hardly ever, is there anybody that will say, I just want to go see Jesus. That's all. Not worried about the pain, not worried about the suffering, not worried about 
all the struggles I'm dealing with, not worried about all of the things I've, I've got going on, and I'm just wanting to just end it. We live in a, a generation that is, that, that's, they, they feel so stressed that they, they come to the point in their life that they feel like the, the best solution is just, just to end it. And they think that's a solution. The sad thing is, is those that are saved who do that. And I do believe that there are people who, who go to that extreme. Uh, a great preacher of yesteryear, they used to call him the prince of preachers in our generation. Great man, Dr. Truman Dollar. One of the most eloquent speakers in all of fundamentalism, in all of, of Baptist circles. A, a tremendous preacher. Been in his pulpit. I always, I've always remembered one thing very significant. In, in his pulpit, he had a piece of paper taped on, his, on the, the ledge of the, of the sacred desk of his pulpit. And it was right there on the ledge where he put the books or put the stuff inside there. And here's what it said. So as he sat there in the pulpit and he looked at that, it said, We, sirs, we would see Jesus. That always intrigued me. And that's always been something that I've kept in the back of my mind. I want people to see Jesus. I want to point people to Jesus. When he was about 64 years of age, shocked the fundamental ranks. He took a gun and he shot himself in his office. I don't know what was going on in his life. I don't know if it was medical related. I have no idea. But that's not the end. Paul wasn't looking to live. Paul was looking to die. Because he missed Jesus. Remember, he saw him on the Damascus Road. And it is believed that he spent about two and a half years with him personally in the wilderness before he started his public ministry. And that's why he said stuff like in Philippians 3, that I may know him, that I may win Christ, be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, which is, but, but the righteousness which is of God by faith. Paul yearned for that day that he could permanently be with Christ, but not looking to get out of his responsibilities and get out of his life here. There's a big difference. So he says, I have a desire to leave this world for a better one, to be with Jesus. It was from a pure, higher motive than any of the other things that we think about. Things like, um, again, disappointment, you know, the loss of an ambition, um, sorrows, struggles, um, mental and bodily sorrows, every kind of thing you can imagine. Okay, this life is, t is difficult. But didn't Paul write this? But our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is, it, it worketh for us an exceeding weight of glory. What he's saying, it, he, he's, he was not trying to minimize the pains and sufferings, but he's saying in light of Jesus, this means nothing to me. This is, this is not, and this is the strait that he's in. This is the dilemma he's in. This is this, this tugging in his heart. and this, he, he feels like he's pressed in, he's being pulled this way, and he's being pulled this way, and he's waiting for God to show him which way he's going to go. Now, the idea also is this. This is, this is also the idea of this dilemma. It's, the picture is that of a man pressed on both sides, um, so that he cannot incline either way. He's between or from the two. The pressure comes from both sides. But Paul uses this as a metaphor, and this metaphor is military-related. The idea, he is saying, is I'm, I feel like breaking camp, like breaking a tent, breaking it up, and okay, it's, it's time, that we got the orders, it's marching orders, it's time to leave and go. And that's what he's feeling. 
He was feeling like it's time, it's just time to go. Just want to be with Jesus. But he says at the same time, I'm, a, I'm feeling a tugging with the people that I'm ministering to. And I feel like that there's more to do. And, and the wonderful thing about Paul is he never thought of his life as a waste of time. Ever. And sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we feel like we're spinning our wheels, we're wasting our time, that it, there's, it's be far better if the Lord just take me. But that's selfish. It's a selfish way to look at life. We are here as long as God wants us on this earth and on this planet to do what he chooses for us to do and to help those that we live with, whether it's our, our spouse, whether it's our children, whether it's our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our neighbors, our friends, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, church members, and outside church members. People, that, people everywhere that we have influence in, our purpose and plan is for us every day to live Christ. Isn't that what he says in verse 21? For to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. That's, that's a wonderful dilemma. <laughs> what he's saying is, hey, Every day I live, every day of my life, my life consists of living for the Lord and helping people in the gospel. He, didn't, he, did, he loved what he did, even in spite of all the difficulty. We, we're not going to take the time, but you can read in, in the book of 2 Corinthians, if you, if you go towards the end of the book and you read what Paul had to go through in his life, Paul says, I glory in my tribulation. The more he got in trouble, the more he was thrown in prison, the more people he had to witness to. And the more troubles and struggles he had being shipwrecked on the Isle of Melita, when he, the, the snake came out of the fire and grabbed his hand and they were waiting, the natives were waiting for him to die, he got to share Christ. And they, they thought he was a god. He wasn't a god, he was filled with God. And so God used him, and so he took every opportunity he could in every fashion to encourage and to build up and to help those that he was around. Now he says, I want to be with Christ. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, is that really true in our lives? Do we really want to be with Christ? Or do we even think about it? Paul used these expressions. Or actually, it was not Paul, but I think it was Peter saying, looking, looking, for, looking for and hasting unto the, the day of the Lord. Meaning that we are to be focusing on Jesus coming. The apostles, when Jesus ascended, they were standing there, gazing. And the angels tapped them on the shoulder and said, Hey guys, hey, wake up! What are you doing? What are you standing here? This same Jesus which is taken up from you shall so come in like manner as you see him go. He's coming back. And he's going to take you home. But if you die before, guess what? You're going to be with him now. You're going to be with him immediately. And Paul, looked, he, he looked for that day. He wanted that day because of his relationship with Jesus Christ. Christ meant more than anything in life. So when he said in, in 1 Corinthians, or Colossians, let me turn there real quickly, turn to Colossians chapter 2. In verse 5, he says, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith. And then later on he talks about how that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord in 1 Corinthians. He talked about this earthly tent, our bodies, referring to that. How that when that's dissolved, we have a, a house in the heavens, not made with hands. We're going to be with the Lord. <laughs> 
one day the great John R. Rice, some of you heard him, I heard him when I was a kid, great preacher, he uh, was one day, he decided to pick up a hitchhiker. Wouldn't recommend it. And it's against the law here in the state of Washington, by the way. But he felt impressed to pick up a hitchhiker. The man had not gotten in the car, had not been in the car very long, stuck a gun in his side and says, give me all your money or I'll kill you. And Dr. Rice had glasses like I have to have now. And he looked across to the guy and he says, can't scare me with heaven. And the young man was so shocked that he wasn't afraid. He shared the gospel and he won the man to Christ. And so the focus of dying should not be the issue. The issue is, what are we doing while we're waiting? What, what are we doing for those that are around us? What are we doing in ministry? How are we serving? The fact is, is we are not here to sit, to soak, and to sour. We're here to be busy reaching people, helping people. Seniors ask me all the time, why am I here? How come God, why doesn't God just take me? He's not through with you. If he was, he would have taken you already. There's somebody that you need to influence. Somebody you need to help. 